Japan's Toy Tengoku. I'm Artis. And I'm Robin. And we are here to have our holiday gift exchange. Yes. Here at Hobby Lake. Oh boy. Yeah, we've had to work together all year. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. now we get to, so we know pretty much what each other would like in our deepest, darkest, fondest desires. Yes. And so we have gotten each other a present. Yes. A present for Christmas. Christmas giftage. Yay. Yay. So, dearest pal, <laughs> I got you a present. Why, thank you. Here you are. Oh, thank you. And I have a present for you as well. Oh, thank Best you. Best mine. Wow. Merry thanks. Christmas, glad holiday tidings. And all like that there. Yeah. You should open yours first. Oh, I can't wait to see okay. what you think of yours. Okay. Let's see. Ooh. Hey. This is quite amazing, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sure we're making a lot of noise getting this out of this bag. <laughs> oh, just open it up and dump it right out. It won't come out that way. It's stuffed in, boy, what, what you, could you have gotten a smaller bag? Check it out, you guys. Yay! It's Astronaut Snoopy by Medicom. Just this came out. Just came out. This is amazing. This is, I'm so glad you got this for me. Thank you so I know much. you're a big Peanuts and Snoopy fan. I am. Now this is, this is really a special kind of release for Medicom because this is actually kind of a reproduction of the uh, pocket doll astronaut Snoopy that was brought out in 1969 by Determined Productions who were handling the Snoopy merchandising back then. Was that like those little ones where you could plug a thing in the back? No, no, those are skediddlers. Oh, yeah. Or skedaddlers, one or the other, I can't remember which. But yeah, this is just like a slightly posable Snoopy and he's got an astronaut snoot on it. And the neat thing about this Snoopy is that one of these, the original 1969 version, obviously was on display in mission control during the Apollo 10 moon mission. Wow. And that's the one where they had the lunar module that they called Snoopy and the, uh, the, the command module was called Charlie Brown. And so they had astronaut Snoopy to bring them good luck in mission control and it sure worked. And here is a reproduction of it. Well, that'll be great to take him out of the box and have a look at him. Wow. Open yours, open yours. No, you first, you first. Oh, okay, well, I'm we, gonna need the cutty thingy, I think. We gotta enjoy the grandeur that is yes. astronaut Snoopy. Oh so, boy. So were they on sale at the same time that the moon mission was going off, or did they bring these out after the moon mission? You know, I'm not really sure. Oh. I'm not really sure. I know that these were commercially available. It's not something that, um, you know, that Mission Control had specifically made just for them, but uh, yeah, this is, this. I do remember, and you can actually can find these uh, still for sale. The, the original ones. Um, the one neat thing that I'd like to point out about this, and we don't have the little rotini stand today, unfortunately, but Oops. The, um, the graphics on this box are actually pretty much just exactly like the graphics on the original box. Now, I've seen a few of the vintage ones that I think that the vintage one came in like a plain, like a brown cardboard box that had this kind of uh, typography and, and um, imagery on it, but, but the, the type is the same and everything, it's amazing. They did a great job. They did a wonderful job. I actually saw a vintage one for sale. Mm -hmm. at, it was at the Mandarake, actually, in Nakano mm -hmm. Broadway a couple mm -hmm. months ago. And mm -hmm. it, was, it was expensive. Yeah, uh, they're really expensive. But it was that, that one of those actually made it to Japan. Yeah, that's kind of amazing right there. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, sorry, you're getting the, you're getting the new Medicom <laughs> Yay, one. Thank <laughs> the you. Vintage one, but it's thank you very much. Just as cool. Yay. OK, let's open her up. All right. Mission Control to Astronaut Snoopy. Mission Control to Astronaut Snoopy. Do you read? Loud and clear, Mission Control, I'm on the moon! <laughs> yep, here he is, Medicom's astronaut Snoopy. Check this out, this is so cool. <laughs> Look at the fact that his tail has a special little thing his, in this space. His tail is actually inside the his suit. His tail is inside the suit. That is so amazing. And he's got the the silk scarf around his neck, which is the same. Now, I always, I remember always thinking, every time I saw a vintage one of those, I thought, oh look, the scarf was like red and it's, it's faded over time. Mm -hmm. No, it apparently was pink to begin with. 
and uh, he's got his uh, his uh, little oxygen thing there, which says flight, flight safety, safety on it, just so you know. And uh, as I understand it, this was actually based on Charles Schultz's uh, renditions of Snoopy in an astronaut outfit. But NASA just came to him and said, hey, do you think you could do this? He said, oh, sure, because, you know, Charles Schultz was a obligate and a very, very nice guy, ob obliging sort of fellow. So he took care of that for them. Um, and uh, he's got his uh, space suit. Uh, he's got his helmet on there. And he's got he's even got the little cap on under the helmet that the astronauts wear Ooh. under the. Let's pull the helmet. And see. Oh, OK. Just like a gashapon egg. <laughs> hull breach, hull breach. Aye. There he is. Now, I, I'd like to point out that this actually is zippered. When we were unpacking and we discovered he had a little piece of plastic tucked into the front of his shirt there, which is a common thing on him, cast-offable figures. So I suppose, Snoopy's strictly speaking, cast Snoopy's cast-offable. Oh. But yeah, it looks like a fully functional zipper on the front of the spacesuit there. And... Um, He's got nifty little plastic soles of his space boots there to go on a moonwalk. And underneath the, the suit is probably a fairly similar, is probably just your basic posable vinyl Snoopy. I remember when I was a little kid, I had a posable vinyl figure of Snoopy dressed as the flying ace. Ooh, uh -huh. He had like the little uh, flight helmet with the goggles on it. Oh, neat. And I'm pretty sure he came with the scarf too. I lost the scarf, but I know I still have Snoopy in the flight helmet somewhere. Wow. I think, I think the goggles have come off the flight helmet, but I do still have the flight helmet. But this is probably pretty similar, if not identical to that. This is amazing. It's, it's got some posability going on there. This is pretty stiff because we just broke them out of the package, but that's okay. Once I play with him, he'll loosen up a little bit, I bet. That sounded terrible, but I think you know what I mean. <laughs> well, what would be worse is if you took off his suit to see what's underneath. Yeah, no, I'm not going to. I know I'm you gonna, would not do that. No, I wouldn't. I promise I wouldn't. I promise. Hey, this is great. You know what? I love, we, I mean, I think I've talked about, I, I love astronaut stuff. I love, you know, old, um, you know, vintage space stuff. I love Snoopy. And this is wonderful. This is just Metacom just, you know, patting that happy little nostalgia spot on me so perfectly. Thank you, Metacom. This is amazing. And thank you very much, Artis, for you're this terrific, welcome. wonderful Christmas present. Merry Christmas. And, you know, I think you're going to enjoy what I got you, too, so... I'm just going to move old astronaut Snoopy off the stage there, and maybe you can break open your package and see what I got for you for Christmas. Yay! Now it's my turn. My turn. It's always the best time of Christmas morning is when you open what's in there. A box. A box. Oh, this didn't come from here, did it? Nope. It came from somewhere else. Somewhere other than Hobby Link Japan. Somewhere other than Hobby <gasps> Link Japan. <laughs> I love getting that kind of a reaction when I get somebody a present. I just love it. I live oh, for that sort of thing. I'm scared to take it out. Melon Kuma! <laughs> Yay, Melon Kuma. Wow. Melon Kuma, and he's, he's, he's sealed for safety. And it looks like a darn good thing, too. Wow. We... <laughs> She's huffing Melon Kuma. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Here, take a whiff. I love the smell of vinyl in the morning. <laughs> Melon Kuma! Melon Kuma. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Soft vinyl Melon Kuma. Put him on the revolving stage. Whoa, what is this? This is from Atelier G1. Atelier oh. G1 made this. Atelier, maybe? Mmm. As yeah. if it's a soft vinyl piece. Wow, oh. look at that. <laughs> That's amazingly detailed. Look at his eyes. Oh, his eyes are scary. Oh, oh. his eyes are like oh. real eyes. Ooh. Oh. Ryan, you must use the camera to gaze into this frightening eyes of Melancuma. Wow, and not to mention the teeth. Jeez. <laughs> gaze into the teeth of Melancuma. <laughs> Wow, so this is the suit. This is the character suit. Yeah. This is the, the scary character mm -hmm. suit as opposed to the, the, the cuter cute character yeah. suit. I'm pretty sure uh, Atoria G1 is, is making like a series of... Local mascots? Right, yeah. Vine, oh, wow. Figures of, of local mascots. You think they'll do a Sanomaru? Oh, that would be That would something. be excellent. I would like to see that very much. Wow. We'll keep taking him on around. Here's the tail of Melancuma. Which is on his head. On his head. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. 
He is quite amazing. He's got a roof of his mouth. Wow. That's wow. some that's some great attention to detail right there. Wow. You know, and those teeth are really frightening. Don't you think so? They're they're terrifying. <laughs> They do look a bit cleaner than actually on the <laughs> looks, on the actual. Looks suit. like the arms move. Oh boy! Wow. Well, you know, I, I bought this for you online, and uh, one of the things that actually sold me on buying this figure was that somebody else had bought one, and um, had taken photographs of him terrorizing the rest of their figure collection. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they they had Melancuma devouring various of their action figures. Really? Yes, they did. Oh, I bet that's neat. Oh, yes, it was it was very very We should we should feed him something. We should. You know what? I actually have a Queen's Blade figure over there. If you want to hand her over here. I know cuz one of the one of the characters that was being fed to him was a Queen's Blade figure. Here we have Elaine from Queen's Blade. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing her name correctly, but that that's okay. She's got her defeat face on here and that's because She's been defeated. She's going to get devoured by Melancuma. <laughs> oh, no. Here we go. Om nom nom. <laughs> She's like, ah, help. Wow. <laughs> wow. Melancuma, you bad boy. Oh, he, oh she gave up. <laughs> My turn. Melancuma. Wow, no. this is fun. We can enjoy the fun of feeding Melancuma. Turn it around to the camera so the camera can see. <laughs> She's like, ah, I got help. Oh, he can hold her up. There you go. Ah. Uh, <laughs> eh. The, the photo that I saw, he was eating, I um, can't remember the character, Raina, I think her oh, name I is. Oh, I can't. And uh, he's, the, the person that took the picture must have, like, popped off her lower legs and sort of shoved oh, her into Melancuma's mouth, and she's going, ah. You know what? What happens if you take your head off? Well, you, you can take her head off. I'll be right back. Oh, no, the Keep head talking. came off. Head Keep comes talking. off. Distract everybody while That's I... <laughs> Well, I feed Melancoma. <laughs> the neat thing about Queens, about Rebel Tech figures, is their heads can be removed and replaced with no damage if you're careful. Her hat comes off too. See, but it's permanently attached to her head. Oh no, Melancoma! <laughs> wow. Wow, this is the best Christmas present ever. Ever? <laughs> ever. Wow. Wow. Yay, Melancuma! Yay! You know, Melancuma could be the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, keep the holiday spirit of Melancuma. Yes, always going. in your heart. Yes, by having a contest. A contest? A contest! Oh yeah. boy! Yeah, dig this. We have, what about, if we have them draw pictures mm -hmm. of Melancuma. Okay. Eating their favorite figure. Yeah! Yeah! There you go. Yeah, that'd be cool. <laughs> so, uh, that would... That would be perfect. Yeah. Let's do that. Okay. We're going to have a contest with Melancuma. You draw a picture of Melancuma eating your favorite character. You have to draw it. Yeah, pencil, pen, crayon. Uh, crayon is awesome. Crayon is awesome. Finger paints. Markers, finger paints, airbrush. Oil paint. Whatever yeah. you like. Paint by number. We're, we'll, we will have some reference photos of uh, Melancuma uh, available for you in the post. And uh, as I understand it, we'll, there will be a special email address. That yeah, people can yeah. Send we'll do it. A scan of the picture too. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, and there's also going to be on our Facebook page. They're going to create a gallery, so you can check out what people are doing and get inspired, and you can add your picture to that gallery just by emailing it to that special email address. There you go. There and you then, go. Then, then of course, here you keep track of him. We're going to have great prizes to give away, right? That's right. Because we magically knew we suddenly magically that we were going to have this contest. Yes. Look. Look what the runner-up gets. What does the runner-up get, Best well, Palo Mine? one good Kuma deserves another. Hey. So this will be one of the runner-up prizes. It's Kuma for Persona yeah, 4. Absolutely. And wow. this is a stuffed toy. I believe Mega House made this. Uh, yes, Mega House made this. Wow. <laughs> Just recently came out. Cool. Kuma. Melan Kuma. Kuma, say hello to Melancuma. <laughs> Uh oh, they're talking secret bear talk. Oh dear. No, now we're in trouble. So the runner up gets Kuma. Yeah, that's one of the runner ups. Well, one of the runner ups. Another okay. runner up gets the Rio Bone Kanchi. Kanchi from Fooly Cooly. That's right. Oh boy. TV head guy, opposable TV head guy. What could be more awesome than that? This is the that? red version. Woo, he comes. I love the cape. I love the fact that he comes with a cape and a guitar. Any figure that comes with a guitar is automatically a win. Yeah, nothing but the best from Gynax, man. Hey. 
Fantastic. Speaking of Gainax. Gainax. Here comes our grand prize winner. Grando prize. The uh, latest Evangelion movie opened, and so... Hey! It's the Makinami Mari illustrious plug suit style PVC hey. from Kotobukiya. Oh, this boy. also just came out. This will be what the grand prize winner gets. And you and me get to decide who wins. Oh boy! Yay! It's fun to be the god! Power. I love it. Of course, Melankuma will assist. Well, of course he will. Melankuma always assists whether or not we want him to. So this will be the grand prize. That's wonderful. Wow, that's great. And we'll have all the details on, in the post and then our Facebook page. Yes. So yes, you, you can win loot. Loot from us. Thanks to Melankuma. By expressing... Your love for Melankuma. Expressing the savagery and the grace and majesty... Of and nature. In, Red in tooth and claw. <laughs> That's right. And it's PVC glory. Yum. <laughs> wow. I love those eyes. Those are so great. <laughs> Did they make many of this? No. There are 20 of these on the planet. 20? 20. It's very, like a lot of vinyls, like a lot of soft vinyl art toys, limited, really limited numbers. Only wow. 20. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're welcome Thank so you. much. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Woo. Well, hey, get in on the fun in the Melankuma yes. contest. Melankuma devours your figures. Time now for questions. questions. We'll take just a quick couple questions here. Um, actually, uh, people had some comments about earlier. There was a question about what, what's good to use to dust figures mm, off Yes, That was yes. when I brought that muttley in here and, mm -hmm. and did abusive things. Uh -huh. um, yeah, so uh, I actually can't see through this very well. What's that say? Uh, Yusep. -E -E Thank you. Yusep says, for dust on figures, I use soft big paint brushes or more often a Swiffer hand duster. To That's take the dust those off are figures. Work. Um, a Swiffer, I think, would work only on large figures that don't have a lot of detail. Um, a, a soft paintbrush is a really good idea. I actually have one, and I'm, I keep meaning to bring it in, but I keep forgetting. It's this very, it's kind of old. I've had it for like eight or nine years, and it's kind of tattered and ratty looking. It's never gotten wet. It's got, it's just got like bristles about an inch long, and I just use it just for dusting. You know, it helps to get in the crevices and get in all the fine details of figures and gets mm -hmm. all the, keeps all the dust out. And it's, it's really handy to have, and that's, you know, and it's always fun to just go over your figures every now and then just yeah. to examine them again and give them a little love with your paintbrush, just get the dust off them. But yeah, a paintbrush works really well. And a Swiffer would too, I would imagine. You know what? This is, this is, I suppose if you have a customized figure, this would apply to it. But you discovered something really magical earlier this year. Magical earlier this year. And that was, uh, I had gotten a a customized model horse mm -hmm. and this horse had been in storage mm -hmm. for who knows how long and bought this off eBay mm -hmm. and the horse arrived just covered with covered with dust mm -hmm. and the horse had been painted and then varnished so maybe mm -hmm. you can apply this to figures too because I never would have thought of this you thought of this mm -hmm. we, we took a brush to it nothing came off well mm -hmm. stuff came off but not enough there was still yeah. dust down in it yeah you then took a flannel shirt that's right. I remember that now. That's right. A flannel shirt, um, just a, or a soft piece of flannel, um, and just scrub lightly against the dust area, and that that took the dust pretty much took right it off. Right. You off. know what else would probably work? and the finish was fine. Yes. Yeah. Was... You know what else would probably work is one of those cleaner cloths, like those things that we actually sell them. Um, with various characters and stuff on them that are that are like microfiber mm -hmm. that you use to clean like your glasses or the screen of your cell phone or your computer screen or your iPad screen or whatever. Um, one of those would probably work too. So, absolutely. So, so dust. We'll, it is our enemy, but yes. we can keep it at bay. Well, Al, I believe Al. this was Al. Continued Al? on page two. Al. Yes, it's our pal Al. Al. Also had some uh, some helpful comments mm -hmm. on what to do in the battle against dust. The battle against dust. And uh, he says where uh, the question come from Riser188, and he mm -hmm. says, I know where Riser188 is coming from when inquiring about dust and what to do about it. Many or even larger display cases are a good suggestion, particularly for smaller collections or special figures or models that you want to protect. They make a big difference. Larger display cabinets also work pretty well for keeping out the dust as long as there's little to no gap around the doors. 
I found a very soft haired brush works great when used with a light touch to clean figures that have an accumulation of dust. Yep, that's right. So Sounds that's like Al and I have hit on the exact same solution. So that's so. Al's help with that. Thank you, Al. Okay, now one last we'll go ahead and do one last question one here. Last and question. this is from Multi Heart. And Multi Heart says, I love Mazinger too. Yay! Yay! Here's my shirt. Piled her Piled on! on. <laughs> Yay! Yay! Fortieth anniversary year of Mazinger Z is Happy coming anniversary. to close. Happy anniversary. Happy Mazinger. anniversary, Mazinger Z. Mazinger Z. Mazinger Z. Z. And love your Melancuma T-shirt. Thanks. <laughs> I love it too. <laughs> Do you plan on doing anything special for Christmas? You know what we're doing on Christmas? Working. We're working. <laughs> We're working. This is Hobby Link Japan, and we are in Japan, and, and Christmas is not a holiday here. Yeah. It's a work day. Yeah. People love to give each other presents, and they do celebrate Christmas. They do give each other presents and decorate for Christmas and have Christmas trees and things like that, but it's not a day you get off of work. So we'll be here working on Christmas Day. Yeah, and the days leading up to it. <laughs> but that's okay. Yeah. This is our busiest time of the year, and it's... It's great because we just we just love to you know help people out getting the perfect present for everybody that they know. That's right. We have a stock right now. We have a stocking stuffer sale going on. Mm. Probably by the time this airs, yeah. it will be over. Uh, but we've had several sales, you know, leading up to the holidays. Yeah. And uh, holiday sales are always fun. And we had a pretty good Christmas this year. I mean, we had a these, wonderful Christmas. With these, these are great presents. Thank you so much for astronaut Snoopy. Well, sure, sure. Now, when we're finally going to be able to escape, finally, can our year will finally end mm -hmm. at Hobby Link Japan. Uh, our last day of work is the 28th. Okay. As of the 29th, mm -hmm. we are free. So free. for you and I, that's like our Christmas vacation because mm -hmm. we're working on Christmas. Mm -hmm. But I know as far as Christmas plans, you and I have one thing planned that we're going to be doing together. Yes. You know what this is? You know what this is. I know but what that is. In case you don't know what this is, it's shiny and difficult to duplicate. What this is, these are real. These aren't duplicates. These are two tickets to the first day of Comic Market, Comic Hit, mm -hmm. which is a three-day event uh, that's being held at Tokyo Big Site in Ariake, the Ariake, mm -hmm. which is out on the man-made island of Odaiba. Mm -hmm. And you and I mm -hmm. are participating as part of the Devil Man Fan Club. Devil Man Fan Club. Devil Man Fan Club. Devil Man also having the 40th anniversary this year. <laughs> so we're going to have a big presentation at our, at our space. And these are the tickets we tear it in two, and each of us gets one. And this is what you're able to get in with if you're participating early in the morning, if you're one of the sellers, if you're one of the circles like we are. Circle passes. Circle so passes is what yeah. these are. And uh, yeah, and but it opens to the public at, I believe, 10. Mm -hmm. We just need to be in the door by 9, I think, with mm -hmm. these. Uh, yeah, it, it gets 150,000 people a day for each of three days. Yes. There's different circles there every yes. day. So anyway, if, if you've got if you've got some time on the 29th, which is a Saturday, mm -hmm. uh, come on by Tokyo Big Site. We're going to be in the West Hall mm -hmm. uh, in row Ne, Hiragana Ne, 8B is our space. So yeah, right. come and get Devil Man goodness. Yes. So that's part of our exciting plans for over Christmas break. Awesome. So we're hoping that we might be able to do one more show yeah. before it ends uh, and before, before the year of End of the year. End of the year. I was yes. going to say before the year of the end. Aztec. Aztec well, you, calendar. Yeah. Well, anyway. So we'll save these questions. Speaking for of end, we've got to come to an end it's for ourselves. That so. time, yeah. Yes. So thanks a lot for Thank sending you so in much. your questions and your comments. We mm -hmm. really appreciate it. It really makes our day when we yes, see, it does. It does. see comments on YouTube. And, and please, all. you know, check out the Facebook page. And check out our videos us on hobbylink.tv hobbylink TV. and on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And we'll look forward to seeing you whenever we next see you. Yeah, Whether this will be this year or next year. We will we'll see you then. Right on here on Toy Tengoku! Tengoku.